Good evening. The legal voters of the Southwest Vermont Union Elementary School District, comprising the voters of the towns of Bennington, Pownall, Shaftesbury, and Woodford, were notified and warned to meet at the Mount Anthony Union Middle School cafeteria on February 26, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. to conduct the business included in that warning. Therefore, I declare that the organization meeting of the Southwest Vermont Union Elementary School District is opened at 5.40 p.m. Welcome to the organizational meeting of this new school district. The purpose of this meeting is to elect district officers, swear in the transitional board, and give the board powers and duties it needs to conduct its business. You will also be asked to decide whether future votes will proceed by Australian ballot and to consider other questions related to the issues that only voters can decide. Minutes are being recorded for this meeting. All motions, remarks, and discussion should be addressed to the moderator. Anyone willing, wishing to address the assembly or anyone responding to questions from the floor must state his or her full name and speak so comments may be heard by the entire assembly. And do we have a microphone at the front for that purpose? Thank you. The microphone is in the center aisle. The first item of business is Article 1 to elect a temporary presiding officer and clerk from among the qualified voters. First, I will address the election of the temporary presiding officer. Nominations are now in order for one person to serve as temporary presiding officer of this meeting. Are there nominations? Yes. Nominate Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy's name has been placed in nomination. Are there other nominations? Yes. Joe Hall. Joe Hall's name has been placed in nomination. Are there others? Okay, we'll take the names in the uh, order that they were given to the presiding officer. Do you typically, for a split office, do you show a hand or maybe I should ask the clerk? Just a voice vote. Okay, we'll proceed by a voice vote unless there is an objection. All those in favor of Chris Murphy, please say aye. 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 Now for Joe Hall, those in favor of Joe Hall, please say aye. Aye. I think I heard Joe Hall. Do I need a division? Any opposed to, to the nomination of Joe Hall being the temporary presiding officer? Seeing none, you have elected Joe Hall as your temporary presiding officer. Thank you, folks. Yes. Thank you, folks. So the uh, see to adopt Robert's uh, or other rules of order which shall govern the parliamentary procedures of the organizational meeting and all subsequent annual and special meetings of the district. To elect the following, oh, that we got there, didn't we? All right. To determine a date and location for the third annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings, which shall be not earlier than February 1 and not later than June 1st in each year. Um, any discussion on this? As there. Um, Joe, we have to alert the. Elect the clerk and the treasurer first. And a moderator. You're only, right now you're the temporary presiding officer. Yeah. So we still got to go through the moderator. And actually, okay, so. Roberts rules of order first. Yeah. Okay. We need to do yeah. three, four. Sorry, I'm kind of romping in the jungle here. <laughs> <laughs> so we just need a motion to adopt the motion. Okay, so we need a motion to adopt the Roberts rules of order. 
So moved. moved to adopt Robert's rules. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So carried. All right, so. Um, Nominations for a permanent monitor. Okay, and then uh, uh, to elect the following officers of the district from among the qualified voters of the district, since officers shall assume office upon election and serve for term of one year or until their successors are elected and qualified. I thought that's what we just did. Temporary. 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 Okay. So any nominations for a moderator? Nominate Chris Murphy. Uh, I didn't hear that. Chris Murphy. Okay. Uh, second? Yeah. Second. Second. Any other nominations? Uh, if there are no other nominations, then we'll take a vote on uh, Mr. Murphy. Can I nominate you? Yes. I nominate Joe Hall. So now I guess we have second. a... Second. You gotta have a second. A challenge. Are there any other nominations? Okay, how do we do this? Uh, by a show of hands or paper or? I think the first one could be by voice and then if you have any doubt, then we could go for a raise of hands and count. Okay, uh, so for Murphy? Yes. Okay. All in favor of Mr. Murphy? Raise your hands. All right. We've got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, <coughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. Really, I feel uneasy <laughs> getting a vote on myself here. Um, in favor of Joe Hall. See your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I guess Miss Murphy had. Oh, did I miss somebody? Did you get us? <laughs> okay, I I got twelve. Is there any dispute on that? So I guess Mr. Murphy gets the to be moderator. All right. So you take my place. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah. need to be sworn. Very good. Hello everyone, uh, we'll continue. Uh, agenda item two, we need to elect a clerk uh, from the district from among the qualified voters of the district. So do I have a nomination for clerk, please? Are there any nominations for clerk, please? Uh, yes, I'm nominating Dick France. Thank you, we have a nomination for Dick France. Do we have a second? Thank you very much. Uh, first and a second, any other further nominations? Yes. Scott McEnany. Very good. We have a first for Scott McEnany. Do we have a second? Thank you very much. Any other nominations from the floor? So we will do this by voice vote in order that they were made. For all those in favor of electing Dick France to clerk of the district, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those in favor of electing Scott to the clerk, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm going to move to a show of hands, please. Uh, everyone in favor of electing Dick France to the uh, Office of Clerk, please signify by raising your hand. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16.
for Dick. And all those in favor of Scott, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so this is March 16 to 10, uh, and you've elected Dick France as the clerk for the district. <clears throat> uh, moving down, we've elected, we've already uh, assumed Robert's Rules of Orders. We now need to elect a treasurer. Um, could I please have nominations from the floor for treasurer for the new districts? Yes. I Stephanie I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? I Stephanie, Stephanie Mulligan. Very good. So we have a first for Stephanie Mulligan. Do we have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Uh, any other nominations from the floor? Yes. Ellen Strohmeyer. Alan Strohmeyer. Thank you second. very much. Do we have a second for, I'm sorry, Alan or Ellen? Ellen. Ellen. Hello. Sorry. Uh, first for Ellen Strohmeyer. Do we have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Uh, so we have. I'm going to write these down. I'm sorry. Could you please repeat your name again, please? I'm sorry. Stephanie what? Mulligan. Mulligan. I would suspect that middle school cafeterias are specifically not built for acoustics. I would guess so. And Ellen Strohmeyer. Do you have any further nominations for treasurer? Any other further nominations for treasurer? And I'll ask a third time. Hearing none, all, we'll start by voice vote. All in favor of electing Stephanie Mulligan for treasurer, please signify by saying aye. 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 Now all those in favor of electing Ellen Strohmeyer, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And I'm gonna move for a show of hands, please. Uh, all those in favor of Stephanie Mulligan, please raise your hands. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 19. Thank you, and all those in favor of Ellen Strohmeyer, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and with the votes from 19 to 9, you've elected Stephanie Mulligan as treasurer. <clears throat> Number five, to determine a date and location for the first annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings, which shall not be earlier than February 1st and not later than June 1st in each year. Um, I'm going to turn to Mr. Stitzel. Steve, does it make most sense for this annual meeting to be held the day before town meeting? Is, does, that, does that make sense? Or maybe you can advise what other merged districts have, have done. Excuse me. Can I yes. Have a motion? Yes, please, Fred. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm Fred Miller from Pound. I'm a Pound resident. I'd like to move that we extend this meeting until March 24th in order for us to hear, hear the uh, findings of, of the judge in, in the matter of the lawsuit. So tell me if, if I have this correct, Fred. So what you're speaking of is there's there's currently a, a, a I will call it class action lawsuit, although I admit that might not be the, the most technically correct term, class action lawsuit that would delay implementation of Act 46. And what you're asking for is a motion to postpone, to tape, to adjourn this meeting or reschedule this meeting. Until, until March the report. Okay. Um, so that the, is the, the motion. Judge, the judge has heard heard the testimony and he, he is um, um, taking the time to do due, due diligence before he gives his findings. Sure. So there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second, please? A second. Thank you. Um, could I have your name, please, for the record? Ellen Stromeyer. Ellen Stromeyer. So we have a first, uh, we have a motion to, Fred, would you, would, you, would you phrase your motion again? Is it to adjourn or postpone? To, this? to extend. To extend. To extend until March 24th. So there's a motion on the floor, first and second, and to extend this meeting until March 24th to allow for the judge who is hearing the lawsuit to make a determination. Uh, we will now open it for discussion. Since I have the microphone, I will start, if that's all right. I'll take the prerogative of the microphone. If that exists, then great. If not, then I will take it anyway. So it strikes me this. So given, given the, the tight timelines, yes? But as moderator, I'm not supposed to do this. It's my first time moderating, so I'll take that under advisement. Thank you, Steve. So yes, please. And uh, folks, um, many of us know each other, but when you take the microphone, if you could please say who you are and in what town you live, please. Yeah, Tim Scoggins from Shaftesbury. Um, I'm opposed to the motion to delay this meeting. It's been delayed once. Uh, we have a tight deadline for getting all this Act 46 stuff in order by July 1st of this year. I think we need to proceed uh, as uh, soon as we can. If we have to change course later on, uh, we'll deal with that when we get to it, but it's going to be uh, really tight to get everything we need in order by July 1st as it is starting tonight. Thank you. Yes, please, if you could come to the microphone. Um. 
My name is Susan Hogue. I'm from Woodford. Uh, the Woodford voters vote this down, but our board voted for this. And I would rather wait till after the judge decides before we go on any further on, on this. And we voted down by 22 votes, not two. So I would rather ex uh, have this postponed until after that because of that. Hello, I'm, I'm Dan Monks. I'm a member of the uh, Bennington School District uh, Board of Directors. Uh, I would, uh, since we're all here, I'd say let's just go forward and get this done. Uh, like it's been postponed once before, and as the speaker said, um, if it, if the court decides not to proceed, then we'll follow the orders of the court. But we're all here. Let's get this done. I'd just like to, like to further state, I think proceeding forward and with this could could present irreparable harm to the town of Pound and the town of Woodford. Should, should the court find that this forced merger will not go through? Thank you. Steve, would it be in order to ask you for some information that um, might inform the voters' uh, decision on this particular motion? At your request, I can offer comments on the status of what is currently pending. So specifically, if you, could, if you could please offer those comments and if you could also inform us what the potential penalties would be if, we, if this motion passes and we do postpone this meeting until March 24th uh, and we are unable to make the deadlines as set forth in statute, what would the consequences be for our districts? If you could speak to that, please. Regarding the lawsuit that has been mentioned, uh, the, uh, the, the speaker is correct that Motions for a preliminary injunction were filed uh, by the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. The preliminary injunction motion would only temporarily delay uh, resolution of the lawsuit while the judge then takes up the case more carefully to make a final decision. The argu oral argument on the motion for preliminary injunction occurred a week ago Friday Judge Mello, who is hearing the case, has indicated he will render a ruling as soon as possible, but he did not provide any specific date by which that ruling would be provided. Uh, in checking this afternoon on the status of the litigation, he has not yet filed a ruling on that. As I say, that would be a preliminary injunction only. It would not terminate the lawsuit or conclude the lawsuit in any way. Um, as the law currently exists based on the State Board of Education's order, uh, all districts involved in the lawsuit, including uh, Southwest Vermont, are obligated to accomplish merger by June 30 with the new governing boards uh, becoming operational as of July 1, 2019. So at this time, that is a, uh, the date that exists in law, and that will remain the date unless a court otherwise orders, which has not yet happened, and there's no commitment from the court as to when that will happen. Uh, so at this point, uh, there's approximately uh, March, April, May, and June, four months, uh, between now and June 30, 2019. For the district, the new district, to become fully operational by July 1, 2019, there are two additional meetings of the voters that are required to be held. The first of those two meetings is to elect a permanent board of directors. At present, uh, there will be a transitional board of directors. But the, the first of the two meetings is to elect a permanent board of directors. If that uh, occurs by Australian ballot, that election of directors occurs by Australian ballot, which is an option uh, 
to uh, to be voted on tonight if you go forward with the meeting uh, you're looking at approximately 50 days to get that meeting because you need to have time for people to file petitions to be nominated for school director those petitions have to be filed no later than six weeks before the, the sixth Monday preceding the, the election, and the election requires a 30-day notice. After that, board of directors is elected. It then needs to prepare an operating budget for FY 2020 and submit that operating budget to the voters for the voters to approve the budget that meeting again requires 30 days notice so if you you know sort of count the days and look at things most favorably uh, it's a very tight timeline between uh, tonight's meeting and and june 30th uh, in terms of what happens if the district is <coughs> legally obligated to be formed by july 1st uh, 2019, but it has not taken the steps necessary to be operational by that date. Uh, I, I, I have not had any clear guidance from the Agency of Education what actions it may take to address that situation should it occur. The one thing I can point to that does exist in Vermont statutes right now is, as most of you probably know, if a school district has not approved a budget for the coming school year by the beginning of the year, it must operate at least until it gets an approved budget uh, at 85% of what was the last approved budget amount. That is something that might be considered by the Agency of Education. But I. I can't say that I've received specific guidance as to that. So Steve, as a further point of information, just to track what you said, it, it, the motion on the floor uh, is to postpone this meeting until March 24th. If that motion were to pass, is it possible for us as, as combined districts to take all of the other required steps in statute by July 1st? I haven't put together a specific timeline. Uh, based on that date mm -hmm. for the organizational meeting, I would say it would be very tight. So I, as I was take, keeping track, 20, 30 days for the budget to be warned, 30 day notice for the meeting before the budget, 50 days before that, to include, which would include the election of those permanent officers. So based on the timelines, and again, I'm offering this for, for information for everyone, I wanna get clarity on this. The amount of time that we, the, the number of days we would have left after March 24th is insufficient to cover those waiting periods required by law. I think you had one 30 day time period in there that uh, if, uh, if you're electing your directors by Australian ballot, mm -hmm. I'm going to suggest approximately 50 days. Okay, yep. From the time that you say we're now moving forward with a meeting to elect directors, okay. So for instance, if you went forward tonight, the transitional board meets, and tonight the transitional board says, okay, we will hold that director election roughly 50 days from now. Uh, that would be one minimum time period. Mm -hmm. That election occurs. Then that new board needs to meet, organize, and prepare a budget which would then be presented to the voters. Uh, I don't know how much time you want to allow for that, but potentially maybe two weeks to get that budget prepared and then warn a meeting on that, which would be a 30-day notice requirement for that meeting. We will be voting in jail. So, yes, so, so folks. And, and that also, um, typically you look at, there's a time to petition for reconsideration of a mm -hmm. budget vote. Mm -hmm. And again, you look at another, you know, extent, that would push it well beyond July 1st. Okay. 
but the initial vote, I believe, you know, if, if Jackie, the, the initial vote would be the middle of June. That that's probably what I would have said. That's the closest I with your timeline. Yeah. So yeah, so middle of June, and just looking at the number of days, should the most, so as folks know, and as they're informed, as they make their decision, should this motion pass, we would have 98 calendar days between resuming this meeting, resuming this process, and needing to be fully operational. Um, so 98 days to accommodate all the waiting periods that Mr. Sitzel just, just outlined, which will take longer than 98 days. And that presumes we actually have what we need by March 24th. Right, that's correct. So um, thank you, thank you for that. Um, any other comments to be made? Jack, please. I have please. a question, Mr. Stitzel. Um, will there be any harm, irreparable harm if we do move forward and they, um, and the judge um, votes in favor of uh, Powell and Woodford? There is no action that would be taken by the transitional board that could not be undone. And it would not uh, involve a great deal of work to undo it. So if, if, if that answers your question. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, you say there, there would be a good deal of work or there would not be a good deal of would work to undo it? would not be a great deal of work. I mean, the, okay. the immediate actions that would come out of uh, moving on this agenda tonight would be formation of a transitional board with the transitional board setting a date for the election of a permanent board of directors mm -hmm. which would provide assuming you adopt Australian ballot voting it would provide sufficient time for the submission of petitions so that those could be submitted the sixth Monday preceding the date of the vote. Sure. Okay. So the date of the vote on the permanent board of directors, if you move forward from tonight, would probably be sometime in mid-April. Uh, and if there has been a ruling by the court prior to mid-April staying the implementation, then all that would be required would be canceling that election. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I really want to know about the disposition of, of the assets of the towns that have been forced into this merger. Um, Woodford, uh, Lee Warrington, and Sandy were also added to the mix. So as I understand, and please inform me if, if, if this is out of order to state, um, the addition of Arlington and Sandgate to the SU is something unrelated to Act 46. Um, sort of, we were delivered with that news at the same time, uh, but it's unrelated to the Act 46. Yeah. I'm, I'm more concerned about, you know, Powell and, and of course, we're, for, you know, they're, they're a small school, they don't have the, have the resources to, you know, defend themselves anymore than Powell does. But there, there are assets that would, at some point, be transferred over to, um, I assume Bennington, um, the school building for one. Uh, I, I, would, I would like to um, you know, really know what the disposition of that is at, at, at this point tonight. Sure. So, Fred, as far as I understand your motion, though, it's to postpone this meeting to hear whether or not there is a stay placed on the legislation by the judge, not to undo Act 46, right? Which, which, if I'm hearing your concerns correctly, that's that's what it comes down to. Okay. Any further? Discussion I can for offer this motion. A comment on Please. the as the current articles of agreement under which the new district would be operating uh, provide that that transfer of real estate and funds uh, to the new district, not not to Bennington per se, but to the new district, is to occur on or before July 1st of 2019. Again, that is something that can occur at the very last minute. It doesn't need to occur any earlier. And if there is a court ruling prior to July 1st, 2019, that delays the implementation, uh, then that transfer would simply not occur. And it is within the control of each of the member district boards as to when they actually sign a deed 
transferring property to the new entity so that, as I say, that can be, you know, postponed to the last minute. Uh, and again, the transfer of funds, uh, even though it talks about that being July 1st, as a practical matter, uh, there frequently has been, with the other mergers I've been involved in, an audit of funds that occurs at the close of the fiscal year, June 30th, 2019, so that an actual transfer of funds from one bank account to another has not occurred. Uh, it, you know, it typically takes a couple weeks or a month or more for that transfer to occur, all of which is time when uh, there could be further clarification from the court. So, Steve, just so I'm just so I'm understanding what you're saying. If the current motion is defeated and we proceed with tonight's meeting, there will be no impact on Pownall, on Woodford, on the, on the assets held by those current member districts at this point? At this point. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. I have a question. If you wouldn't mind coming to the mic so the folks watching at home can see you. Please. Thank you. Uh, what, if the, what if the school does not own the school? The town does. It's not a school district that owns the school, the town does. So what happens then to that school? Because then the school board cannot sign the school over to that district because the town would have to do it. I'm right? ha happy to defer this to Mr. Stitzel. We have not looked at uh, the title to the various properties that would be transferred, so I, I can't speak to whether uh, there would be, you know, whether the town is in fact an owner of property at this point. If the school is currently the owner of the property, and uh, they've uh, looked into it and they've been looking into it, and I know part of the land of the school is the town's. It's underneath a town deed and not a school district. And and we have we've dealt with that in some other districts and where. Uh, if the, if the town is in fact an owner of the property, then this, there's nothing in the state order that compels the town to convey the property. If the town is the owner of the school building, there are more significant issues that okay. will have to be addressed, uh, especially if there has been state education aid to that school district for that building. But we've had a number of situations where the school building is owned by the school district. Some land that is used in connection with the school is owned by a neighboring town. And uh, the, the authority the, the, to compel conveyance is with school-owned property, not with the town-owned property. But we will be doing a full title search. So Steve's firm that we did. It was all set. But when the meeting got delayed in January, we put that on hold until the outcome of the meeting to see do we go forward with doing the title searches for all school districts. Yeah, because they've been doing that in Woodford yeah. already. Thank you. Dick, you had your hand raised? I just wanted to say that um, the board doesn't feel, Woodford board does not feel they're in a position to sign off or onto anything until we have a legal determination, which we've asked for in two areas. Um, one is ownership, and the other one is impact aid, which is a significant asset financially. Thank you. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, we're going to go right for a show of hands. All those in favor of all those in favor of the motion, which is to adjourn, I'm sorry, to postpone this meeting until March 24th, to allow. Brent, I'm going to ask for a bit of clarification on your motion, please. Your motion is two parts. Your motion is to adjourn the meeting until the 24th in order to allow the judge to weigh in on, on the lawsuit. In the event that the judge does not weigh in on the lawsuit by March 24th, I'm wondering what we do with that. So I would ask if you would consider a, amending your motion to simply postponing this until the March 24th without condition, um, which would thereby allow us to move forward whether or not the judge issues a decision. Or, alternatively, you might consider amending your motion to postpone this meeting until the judge renders a decision on the lawsuit. But it's your motion, and I will leave it to you one way or the other. Uh, 
I, I just think it's, it's important for us to know what, what the terms of decision is. Okay. Um, so we can move forward with the motion as is. Okay, so all those in favor of postponing this meeting until March 24th to allow the judge to render a decision on the pending lawsuit, please signify by raising your hands, please. Two, three, four, five, <coughs> six, seven. All those against this motion, please signify by raising your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more. So seven, four, please keep your hands up. I'm gonna count them all. Uh, thank you, two, five, seven, nine, 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So the motion is defeated. Uh, so moving on to agenda item number six, to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. May I have a motion, please? Finish treasure. Oh, thank you, cheese. Thank you very much. Uh, we did not. So we have. We did treasure. We did. Uh, Stephanie Mulligan uh, yeah. was elected treasurer. Yeah, but we need to do the date and location of the annual meeting. Thank you. The date and location of the annual meeting. Thank you very much. So um, returning to number five. The question I had posed to Steve uh, is if he could advise as to what other districts have done, other merged districts. The, the, it, to, yeah. to correspond with town meeting day. Yes. Okay. So uh, could I please have a motion to propose a date for, uh, for the first annual meeting of the district, please, with the knowledge that typically these are done in accordance with town meeting day? Yes, Joe. I think the uh, annual meeting should be held at town meeting like the other school districts. Um, I think it would be simpler and easier for everybody involved to have it uh, at the same time at town meeting. Very good. So we have a motion to make the first annual meeting to correspond with town meeting day. Do we have a second, please? Second. Thank you very much. Uh, Gene Rowley with a second. Any discussion about making the annual meeting correspond with town meeting day? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, Dick. Does, that puts two meetings, same day, same time. We're all in different districts. How do we, how do we accommodate that? So it's my. So this would be the first meeting of the of the single district. So we right, but we also have a town meeting. We have a town meeting, and so I would imagine, although this was not addressed in the motion, this is this is simply determining the date and location, not the time. We of, typically stagger the times. So yeah. throughout the evening. So we're not, we're so by passing this motion, we would not be binding ourselves to a specific time on town meeting day. Simply that it would take place within that calendar day. Um, and I'm realizing we also need a location which we can address in a separate motion. So right now the motion on the floor is to make uh, the first annual meeting of the new districts to correspond with town meeting day, with a first and a second. Any further discussion, please? Yes, please. Jerry Crew, my question is how does four different towns go to this town meeting? That's what you're talking about. You're talking about having this meeting could you, Jerry, could you step to the mic, please? Thanks. And I'll, I'll ask you to start over, please. <laughs> I just wonder how you could have your four separate towns be at a town meeting, because you're talking about this school board meeting at four different locations. Are you going to have four different meetings that night? Are you going to have four different town meetings for them to get there? That's just my, I, I don't know That's, how you can do that. That's just my question. Sure. That's a question. Thank I would you. think it would be similar to how MAU operates that there would be one uh, town meeting in a central location, but the uh, ballot voting would take place in the individual towns the next day. Okay. Um, and I, I would remind folks that the, the, the published, the, the warned agenda is simply to determine the date and location of this meeting, not necessarily to eke out the finer details. And I'm, I'm uncomfortable moving forward talking about those finer details because it was not warned in this agenda. So I, I just put that out there. Uh, Scott. No, I'm good. Enough. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, any further discussion on the current motion, which is to set the annual, the first annual meeting to correspond with town meeting day? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 
22 in favor. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. One, two, three, six. Very good, the motion passes. So town meeting day is when we will have it. Uh, could I, so we also need to determine, determine the location. Could I have a motion as to where to hold this meeting? I'd just like to propose that we rotate from building to building within the new district. So it's fair to all the voters, although that would be a year apart, it would be more amicable to move it around. Would you mind going to the mic and introducing yourself and framing that as a motion, please? <laughs> Meredy Capella, BSD. Um, I propose moving the annual meeting from building to building within the new district. That way it keeps it fair. It would be a year apart and there would be some movement involved, but I'm sure we could adjust times so that people could get from one meeting to the next. But that way people in each of the new districts would have an opportunity we, to we attend. Say town to town, because in Woodford, town to probably town. be in uh, town offices rather than in the school. But right. Yeah. Mary, so, as part of your motion, do you wish to place to, to name a starting location? I wasn't making a motion. I was proposing it. But I could make a motion if you would like me to make a motion. It's entirely up to you. I make a motion that we consider moving the town meeting for the school district from building to building annually, rotating alphabetically or however works for everybody. Do you want to include in your motion a location to start in our first year? Whatever it is in the alphabet, whoever, B maybe for Ben L. So uh, I believe the motion on the floor is to hold the first annual meeting at Bennington Elementary School. But the buildings within the towns. Oh, from the first towns. Okay, that's a, that's a good point. Making the motion to say per town, so alphabetically whoever is first. So the motion on the floor is to hold the first annual meeting of the district in Bennington, which starts with B, B, and then all subsequent years to be held in the town, which appears next alphabetically. Seems the only. Could I have a second for that motion, please? Could it, I'm sorry, who was the second, please? Thank you. So Mr. James Chancey is the second. Any discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, I'm sorry, uh, reopening up for comments, please. Um, yeah, I would just suggest for simplicity that we just state a location for the first meeting. Uh, at this point, we're, we're supposedly saying where all subsequent meetings will be held, but there will be a board in place at, uh, by June 1st, July 1st. Uh, we can go into that then. I think at this time, to keep things simple, we meet in Bennington. We say it's in Bennington. If, sub if subsequent subsequently, once we have a permanent board, they want to rotate it, they can do that and work out the logistics. So as a point of order, and I, I note this only because it's what the, the warned agenda calls for, the warned agenda does specifically call for us to select uh, a, a date and location for all subsequent annual meetings as well. Um, I think certainly if there are concerns about the simplicity of, of the design, those could be raised at a later meeting. Um, for right now, we have the motion on the floor, first and seconded. Um, are there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye, by raising your hand and saying aye. One, two, you don't have to say aye, I suppose. Five, seven, nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 24. All those against the, against the motion, please signify by raising your hand. One, two, three. Three. So the motion carries. Agenda item six, to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. May I have a motion, please? I move that we um, vote on our um, the district's budget and the district's officers by Australian ballot. Very good. Could I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. That was Joe for the second. Any discussion on the motion on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. One, two. We're going to call that nearly unanimous, and the motion passes. We just did seven. And we just did seven as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, could I, so returning to number six, could I please have uh, the, the warrant agenda calls for to de for us to determine whether to vote on the district's budget, which we did by Australian ba ballot, but also to address all other public questions by Australian ballot. So could I please have a motion? Let's just amend mine. 
I don't know that we can amend it because we already voted on it and it's been closed. So I would ask for a brand new motion to address all public questions by Australian ballot. Thank you, by Mr. Chansey. Did I have a second, please? Thank you very much, Mr. D'Onofrio. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of answering all other public questions by Australian ballot, please signify by raising your hand. Nearly unanimously, it passes. Uh, we've just done number seven. Um, we're going to move on to number eight, to determine and approve compensation, if any, to be paid to di officers of the district. So I would entertain a motion of any sort, please. I believe the uh, Bennington district is at 1,200 a year. Um, I would, I'm making a motion that uh, the uh, school board members would be paid $1,200 a year. So there's a motion on the floor to pay all school district officers $1,200 a year. Can I have a second, please? Yes. No. Dick? Board members. Just a point of clarification, because Joe was talking about members. Uh, I think the, the item was officers. Am I correct? That's correct. So, so Joe. We can vote on his motion. Yeah, so, do, so there, there is a motion on the floor, which brings us to agenda item nine, which is compensation for members of the district board, which is, which is the motion that Joe just made. So Joe has made a motion uh, addressing agenda item nine uh, to compensate members of the district board $1,200 a year. So is there a second for that motion, please? Yes. Uh, just question, are officers and members currently paid differently? Yes. 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 Yeah, like the moderator rate is one thing, treasure. so that's those are the offices, moderator treasure. So we have to take that as a separate vote. And in Bennington, is a is a normal board member the twelve hundred dollars that was mentioned? Yes. 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 Here's your second, anyway. Thank you, Dick. So uh, we have a first and second for the motion to pay to compensate all members of the new district board twelve hundred dollars per year. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hands. We will call that nearly unanimous, and that passes. Uh, thank you for that. Moving up to moving to agenda item number eight, uh, we need to determine and approve compensation for the officers of the district, which are those officers are the moderator, clerk, and treasurer. Those are the three officers of the district. I would like to speak to the moderator, seeing that I have been a moderator of uh, MAU and, and the Career Development Center. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> and I, I, there's very little to do. I, I, Mr. Murphy, I know tonight, I'm glad you're the moderator, not me. But uh, it's a little more difficult. But um, I think the moderator, I don't know, $10? Uh, I think would be a, a good uh, fee for a moderator. The other two officers, I, I don't, I really don't know. So um, I'm going to turn to our attorney and our superintendent. Is currently a hundred dollars for each of the three officers? No. So no. My, my question would be, what? The moderator currently is a hundred dollars. Treasurer twenty five per year. A hundred dollars per year for moderator. It's one meeting. And I'm, I'm acting, pointing over to our director of finance operations. She has the figures for the current treasurer and. It varies, but um, in the bigger districts, the clerk makes $1,000 annually. And then I combined, by combining all the budgets and looking at what um, the overall budget is and what other district treasurers make, I was recommending 24000 for the treasurer. So as a point of, point of information, um, the current going rates for the moderator is $100 a year, the clerk is $1,000 a year, and the treasurer is $24,000 a year. There is currently a motion on the floor to compensate the moderator $10. So is there a second for that motion? Second. Thank you, Dick. So uh, we have a first and a second uh, to pay the, to compensate the moderator $10 per year. Any discussion on that? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of compensating the moderator $10 a year, please signify by raising your hand. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Scott, is your hand up? I don't know, I've never. No, no. Uh, nine for the motion. All those opposed to the motion, please signify by raising your hand. And that is more than nine. So the motion fails. So is there another motion on compensation for the district officers? <laughs> so, uh, so Joe, we'll get to you, but actually I see Gene Rowley raising his hand in the rear. And with Gene, I'll ask you to step to the mic, please. <clears throat> uh, Gene, Gene Rowley from Bennington. Uh, I make a motion that we follow uh, Renee's advice and go with the three figures that she had. So uh, which was $100 for the moderator, $1,000 for the clerk, and $24,000 for the treasurer. Thank you. So we have, we have that motion on the floor. Does it have a second? Second. Thank you very much. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as it stands, which is to compensate the moderator 100, the clerk 1,000, and the treasurer 24,000, please signify by raising your hand. Four. We'll say it's, it's the majority, so that passes as well. Uh, agenda item number 10, to establish provisions for the payment of any expense incurred by the district before it becomes fully operational on July 1st, 2019, <laughs> under a voter-approved budget for the fiscal year beginning on that date. And I'm going to turn to Steve and to Jim and ask for some clarity around that, please. I'm going to turn to Renee on that. So she's so, on these two items. Renee, could, uh, I'd like to invite you to the microphone or a microphone so that folks can hear you, please. Um, I was thinking that expenses that are incurred, if we can track them by district, that the districts themselves um, would pay for them, but if they cannot be allocated by district, that we would apply them by equalized pupil that has been determined by the Agency of Education. Ask Renee. Renee, can you please suggest a motion that would meet the needs that you just outlined? To move that districts pay their respective costs when able to be allocated. Otherwise, costs would be paid by percentage of equalized pupils in the union district. Thank you. The question was what may be some of the expenses between now and operations? Yeah. Elections. Elections. <laughs> yeah, it's mainly going to be elections. Thank you. So there is a recommendation or a sample of what a motion could look like. Uh, is there any motion uh, to be made to address this item? I, I think so. So I, I'm going to presume that, uh, that Richard Bump, uh, being as vigorous a note taker as he is, has that all down completely. And if not, there's a video copy that Cat TV is nice enough to do. Um, so if there is a motion to be made to do what Renee soon says, uh, would you mind coming to the, to the mic, Tony, and letting us know that, please? Tony, the operator of Shaftesbury, I make a motion that we uh, listen to what Renee just said. And <laughs> Very good. Uh, is, there, is there a second for that motion, please? I see a number of, of motions. So I need further discussion on that. Hearing none, all those in favor of following the advice of Renee, please signify by raising your hands. And I will call that nearly unanimous, and that passes as well. Uh, agenda item number 11, to authorize the district to borrow money pending the receipt of payments from the state education fund by the issuance of its notes or orders payable not later than one year from date, provided, however, that the district is authorized by Vermont statutes to borrow sufficient funds to meet pending obligations. Do we have a motion to that effect, please? Thank you. That was from Tony D'Onofrio. Do we have a second, please? From, I'm sorry. Thank you. From Jerry Prue in the rear. Any further discussion on agenda item number 11? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Nearly unanimous, we'll call that pass. And the final agenda item, number 12, to determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors pursuant to the provisions of 16 Vermont statutes annotated subsection 563, subsection 10, and 11C to provide mailed notice to residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of distributing the annual report and proposed budget. Could I please have So moved. Thank you. Who's the first on that, please? Thank you, James Chancy. And we have Joe as a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor, please signify by raising your hand. We'll call that nearly unanimous, and that passes as well. 
So that exhausts the warned agenda for this evening. So do we require a motion to adjourn the meeting? Could I have a, such a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Jackie Crew. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you very much. We'll give it to Chael. Chael Escore, who raised her hand. Uh, any discussion about adjourning? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by raising your hands. It is, uh, actually, I'm gonna move for a uh, paper ballot on this. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for participating, everyone. Motion so, uh, closes. We, we have one other meeting scheduled for this evening. Immediately following this is the first meeting of the transition board of the Southwest Vermont uh, Union Elementary School District. I will actually open that meeting. Um, so if Bridget could note, I'm opening that meeting at 632, I believe it is. Uh, maybe we first order of business. We'll have the clerk swear in the new board members of the transitional board of the Southwest Vermont Union Elementary District. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to call for nominations for the chair of the transitional board. No, Nominate right. Chris this Murphy. this is a board meeting. Just to be clear, this is not nominations from the floor. It's from this board, and the vote is from this board. Nominate as in a regular Murphy. school. Chris Murphy. Second. Second. Are there any other nominations for chair? Hearing none, I will close the nominations. Call for a raise of hands. All in favor of Chris Murphy being the chair of the traditional board, please raise your hand. Got that, Richard? It seems, are you abstaining? Yes. All right. Any, any abstentions? We have one. Yes. All right. Uh, Ms. Murphy has been elected the chair of the transitional board, and I will turn the meeting over to Chris. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everyone. Uh, agenda item two is to warn a special. We need a clerk. 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 Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Uh, the first agenda item, now that the chair has been elected, is to elect a clerk of this transitional board. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Scott McEnany. So first for Scott McEnany. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you very much, Dick. Uh, so we have Scott McEnany is uh, nominated. Do we have any further nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Scott McEnany as the clerk of the transitional board, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? I don't know if the chair wishes, but uh, you also have the option of electing a vice chair in case there's a meeting you're not able to attend. And also. So, Jim, is that allowed, even though that's not on the warrant agenda? Uh, our attorney is saying yes. Okay. Well, then, we're going to do that. Uh, so, so first of all, congratulations, Scott. Thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Uh, and do we, can I please have nominations for a vice chair? I nominate Cindy Brownell. Second. So we have a first and a second for Cindy Brownell. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Cindy Brownell as vice chair of the transition board, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, you have elected Cindy Brownell as your vice chair. Congratulations, Cindy. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item two, to warn a special meeting to elect initial members of the new school district. So, Steve, I'm going to ask, can you please weigh in one more time about what our timelines are with regard to this election? Okay. So, right now you're at February 26th. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the first question is, how much time do you want to provide for people to take out petitions and get them filed with the clerk? Understanding that uh, if the you set an election date tonight, mm -hmm. the word will go out to the four clerks that are involved. They will prepare the petitions, so they will probably want a couple days for that. So mm -hmm. maybe have petitions available to be picked up this coming Monday. Um, and then frequently uh, 
I've seen, you know, uh, for this type of election, they provided two weeks to actually get the petitions filed. Mm -hmm. So if the petitions are available on, uh, what would it be, March 3rd? Mm -hmm. Fourth. The 4th? Yeah. Petitions available March 4th. If you allowed petitions to be filed up to March 18th, and then we back up six, so eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. That means your election would be April 22nd. Is there a clerk here who wants to Monday. double check my yeah. counting on that? Yeah, so, and I would actually invite any of the town clerks to step forward. And I would say that would be the, the 23rd. I'm Cassandra Barbo, I'm Bennington town clerk. Um, I looked at the dates ahead of time, obviously, because I knew there was the petition requirement. And um, we are looking at if we were to have the election April, assuming we're going to go with Tuesdays like we usually do, um, if we were to have the election April 23rd, that would be a petition due date of March 11th. And then, of course, like you were just speaking of, we could push it out another week with having the election April 30th with a due date of March 18th. Cassie, have you, have you conferred with the other town clerks when, when coming up with that date, or is that uh, representing Bennington? Um, I haven't talked to them. I've talked to Renee. I think that she's talked a little bit with the other clerks, maybe. Are there other town clerks present who would like to speak to that? Please, I would invite you to come right. <laughs> well, well what, I, what I'd like to know, it does the, the timeline that Cassie outlined, is that, is it, would that be sufficient for your needs as well? So, I'm sorry? Either one would work. Okay, very good. So, can I make a motion? Please, Jackie. I move that we um, have the vote on April 23rd because that's still going to put us into the middle of June before we can vote on a budget. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, the motion on the floor is to hold the election of initial members of the new school districts on April 23rd. Is there a second for that? Second. So uh, I believe, Tony, and please tell me if I'm wrong, is this, uh, the voting on these motions, is it open to all those in attendance or is it strictly for the it's members the of this board? Okay, but thank you, Tony. So we need a second from this, from the board, from this transitional board members. Thanks. Second. Second. Okay, very good, thank you. So we have a first and a second. Any further discussion on, on naming April 23rd as the election day for the initial members of the new school district? Just to reestablish it, that means petitions are due on? Very good. So any further discussion? <laughs> so hearing none, all those in favor of holding our initial election on April 23rd, 2019, please signify by raising your hand. And any opposed? Seeing none, very good. The motion passes. Agenda item number three, review the proposed FY 2020 budget, which was enclosed and was posted on the website. And I would ask Renee to come join us at the mic, please. So this is iteration number three that you folks um, have seen. So the changes from draft two um, that we were looking at at your individual boards, um, because Shaftesbury and Pownell kept their school resource officer funding in, I added it back in for the three Bennington schools. Um, we've adjusted for the treasurer position and then also for the board member positions. So those are the only changes from the last um, version of the budgets that you folks have seen. So I mean, I, I can go through it in more depth, but I know that, I mean, I, I tried to give the narrative with the highlights on the back. Um, page one, two, three, four of the handout is probably the, um, page that most people want to look at to see what the projected tax rates are. So essentially we've taken the budgets of each of the individual school districts, which all of the individual boards had worked on, um, piled them all together. I assume that once the um, board is formed that 
um, there may be some, some movement. Um, but at this point, everything's in. You can see it is a budgeted expenditure of $23.2 million, um, offsetting local revenues of about $2.2 million, which puts us at education spending of $20.9 million. Um, equalized pupil figures that I have included um, in this scenario here were as of um, February 7th, as you can see the estimates noted there. Um, we have received yet another iteration of equalized pupils, version 12, which they have said is the last version. Um, they have been very, very minor changes, tenths and um, one hundredths of thousandths, so the, the changes are very minor to what the tax rates would be. So essentially, um, blending the tax rates between Mount Anthony and the Elementary Union District, if you um, flow on down to line number 12, the estimated FY20 total adjusted homestead tax rate, going across that, the next line down is comparative to what our tax rates were this year. Um, line 14 will then show you that Bennington is looking at roughly uh, just under a penny increase. Pownall is uh, a penny and a quarter decrease. Shaftesbury is almost a two cent increase and Woodford about a two cent increase. So I'm happy to answer any questions or you know, if, if we wanna go into further, but I know we've been kind of working on this since November, so. So thank you for your ongoing work on this, Renee. Are there any questions for the board? Yes, Dick. Yeah. All of that is after we have averaged for the, for the It's for combining the everything. So it's taking all the expenses and all the revenues of all the districts and combining it into one. So it's, it's my understanding, and I would turn to, to Jim and to Steve for clarification. It's my understanding we do not need to take action on this. This is simply a review for, for public your, information. Your due diligence is to you can work on so that you have a budget to recommend to the initial board once they are elected. Okay. But you don't but we, we have time. Right. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, any members of this uh, transitional board wish to take any other action or do any more work with this proposed FY20 budget tonight? Okay. So moving on to agenda item four, we need to warn the next meeting date. And again, Steve, uh, can you advise what time frames we are under in terms of the next meeting, if any? At this point, uh, you will need to get together to actually sign a warning for the election to be held on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, that would be signed. Uh, it's a 40 to 30 day window, so you're looking at you know, a meeting on the 18th or 25th of March. Actually, not the 25th. The 18th of March meeting would be, or the 11th of March date would be suitable for, that. those are Mondays, but yep. in, in that time period, you need to get together and sign a warning. Sure. We need to get that prepared. That can't be prepared until the petitions are submitted and the clerks give us the names of the people who will be running for the, the specific positions. What you may want to do, uh, or you have an option, of setting a regular meeting date, and you would probably only have two or three regular meetings between now and the time of the election, mm -hmm. uh, or you can do every meeting as a special meeting so that uh, you can, the date, no? you can, for instance, you could set a meeting date tonight and then that would be noticed by 24 hours, minimum notice, before that meeting date. But you would all know when that date was going to occur. And it can be noticed more than 24 hours in advance. Mm -hmm. If you set a regular meeting date, uh, then you know when your regular meeting dates are. So a question for any town clerks who happen to still be here. If we were to hold a meeting on March 11th, which is the day that petitions are due, would the town clerks have the information they need to let us know who has turned in petitions to run for the new board? Or if you have a meeting on the 11th? If we have a meeting the evening of the 11th. Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, I would entertain a motion to hold our next meeting on March 11th, and I'll let the person making the motion pick a time. So move. Do you have a time in mind, Dick? 
seven. Seven. All right. So yeah. I have a mo there's a motion on the. Thank you for clarifying. A motion on the floor to hold our next meeting on March 11th at 7 p.m. And the location, Dick. Do you have one in mind for your motion? Middle school. At the middle school. So there's a motion on the floor to hold our next meeting on March 11th at 7 p.m. in the, at the middle school. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Thank okay. you, Jackie Crew. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that is our next meeting date. So uh, that's our next meeting date. So that exhausts our agenda for this evening. Could I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a from Jackie and Ed. First and second, any discussion about adjourning? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Aye.